So whatever the name is that you choose here is arbitrary, but it should be unique to our current project. So we'll just call this Advantage API Secrets. And maybe we'll put a hyphen in between each of these words. And now we can use the CLI tool here to basically set secrets for our application. So we'll use this in just a moment here to set the password um, that we'll need to actually connect to our Postgres database. So let's go ahead and wire up our Postgres database. So we'll be using a Postgres database for this course. And when you install the Postgres database server, you should also be able to install PG admin. So this is the sort of GUI uh, front end for uh, working with your Postgres database. It is in a sense uh, like a development platform for Postgres. Uh, we won't be using it for much, um, but we will be able to write raw queries against the database that we create. And we'll also use it to create a login um, to use on behalf of our application. So you can see I've created a login here. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that now. So within PG Admin, let's take a look at login slash group roles. And if we right click here and select login slash group role, we'll go ahead and create a new user. So I'll just call this one PDEV. And uh, under definition here, we'll provide a password for it. In my case, this will just be ABCD. Um, we can set some other things like when the account expires and a connection limit here. Um, for privileges, we're just going to select everything here um, and we'll make the user uh, a super user. Then under membership, um, we won't worry about anything like roles or any of the parameters or security um, that we can actually build into the user here. We'll just keep it simple with a name, um, a password, and super user privileges. So we'll go ahead and save this user and then you should be able to see that user here. Okay, so let's head back into the code here and now we're going to pay another visit to our startup.cs class. And if we scroll down here into our configure services method, what I'd like to do is to register the uh, service that will allow us to work with Postgres, um, or I should say allow Entity Framework to work with Postgres. So we'll say services.add empty framework npg sql. And then here we're going to add db context using our API context. And here we'll define a lambda to basically pass it our connection string. And so what we can do is we say use npg sql. And then this takes our connection string. But first, let's go ahead and control period on each of these to bring in the appropriate namespaces. So we'll bring in our models namespace. And here we'll bring in uh, Microsoft Entity Framework Core. And you'll see on this method, um, it expects our connection string. And so what I'd like to do is, in the past, I've stored connection strings in um, our app settings.json file. Um, but just to show you how you can store a connection string, here using the uh, secrets manager. Um, I think this is a better way to do it. That way we never check in um, any of our sensitive data contained in our connection strings into source control or even uh, open up the possibility for checking it into source control. So we'll do that in just a moment here. I'm going to put this out on a separate line and this just to kind of clean things up a little bit here. Here we'll uh, store our connection string in a, um, oops, connection string, not connection section. <laughs> and so we can go ahead and define that here just within configure services as well. So we'll say that um, this field connection string will be set to um, our configuration. And we'll name it uh, just connection string here. And so let's go ahead and define that field on our startup class. So we've got a private string connection string, which we'll set initially to null. 
Okay, now notice that in our constructor here in startup, um, we are setting configuration equal to this I configuration that we pass. And one thing to note here, um, this is something that's a bit different uh, between .NET Core 1 and 2.0, um, is that this create default builder in our program.cs will actually load user secrets um, from our iHosting environment um, when it's development. And so if we head back into startup.cs, when we're referencing the connection string key from our configuration, that's going to pull that directly from our secrets. And in fact, I think I'd like to call this a secret connection string um, just to be clear that this is coming from our user secrets. So let's go ahead and store our connection string as a secret. So we can do that using .NET user secrets set, and then we can set the name of the secret in this case, uh, secret connection string, and then the value of that secret. So in this case, our entire Postgres um, connection string. So this is going to be a pretty standard Postgres connection string. We'll have our user ID defined here. And in our case, this will correspond with uh, the pdev user that we just created in pgadmin. We'll have our password. This is the sensitive part along with our user ID. In this case, I had a very insecure password of ABCD. Certainly, you'd want to do better than that if you're working with um, an actual application in, in production, certainly. Um, now we'll define our server, which is just localhost port, which um, is 5432, uh, the database name, so this is just a database, and this can be whatever you like. I'm going to call ours advantage.api.dev, and then integrated security equal to true, and pooling equal to true. And don't forget the semicolon at the end of um, the last part of the connection string here. Then we have double quotes uh, just to finish off the entire string and we can go ahead and hit enter to store that key in our user secrets. So with that we're about ready to run our first migration. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll run .NET EF migrations add initial migration. So let's go ahead and try to run this. So when that's complete, we should get done out to the command line here and notice we'll have a migrations folder now that contains some C sharp files for our uh, migration. Uh, we'll also have this uh, model snapshot and you can kind of scroll through and take a look at these. Um, basically, Entity Framework is going to use these migrations to execute some commands against our database to actually create um, create the database first of all since we don't have it yet and then create some tables containing again columns for the various properties that are on our um, entity models. So let's go ahead and update the database. For that we use the command .NET EF database update. Okay so you can see that it has applied the migration and then we have a timestamp here and initial migration This sort of identifies the migration that we've run and then once again we get done out to our terminal. So let's go ahead and revisit pgadmin4 and if we expand our databases here and actually if we right click and refresh and then expand databases we should see the new database here on our database server. So this is pretty cool. Uh, this means that our user secrets worked. We don't have that uh, connection string containing our admin username and password anywhere in source code, so it won't go into source control. And we can also quickly confirm that the tables that we uh, created from our entity models were also generated. So if we expand schemas and then public and then head down to tables, we can see that we have customers, orders, and servers tables generated for us. We also have this EF migrations history table um, created for us as well. Okay, so in the next video, we will begin creating a database seeder that will actually seed our database um, with some initial data so that it's a little bit more interesting to uh, develop our Angular application against.